Assalamu alaikum everybody. Welcome to our third lecture on the course Introduction to Artificial Intelligence. Uh, this lecture is on uninformed search and this is the outline of the topics. Uh, first we discuss briefly about problem solving agents generally. Uh, then we look at example problems that are normally solved using this uh, problem solving agents and especially using the searching method so we're going to look at searching for solutions generally and then we'll look at uninformed search strategies uh, we shall learn informed search strategies in the next lecture but for now we shall concentrate on uninformed search strategies and we're going to consider about six of them in this lecture namely breadth first search bfs uniform cost search ucs depth first search dfs depth limited search dls iterative deepening search IDS and finally bi-directional search BDS okay let's look at now the problem solving agents this is a natural following off from the last lecture where we discuss about different types of intelligent agents so as we discuss in that lecture intelligent agents are supposed to maximize their performance measure and this can be achieved if the agent can adopt a goal and the aim at satisfying it. As we learned, one of the type of agent is called goal-based agent. And particularly, the agents that employ searching techniques are example of this type of agent. Goal formulation based on the current situation and the agent performance measure is the first step in problem solving. We're going to see that uh, problem solving or agents that are uh, involved in problem solving, they undergo a number of steps. And one of such steps is goal formulation. In this goal formulation, we consider a goal to be a set of world states exactly those states in which the goal is satisfied uh, this will be clearer when we start taking examples so once we have formulated the goal the next step is problem formulation okay this is the process of deciding what actions and states to consider in order to satisfy the given goal once we formulated the problem the next step is the searching process so this is a process of looking for a sequence of action that will actually achieve the goal intended okay a search algorithm takes a problem as input and returns a solution in the form of action sequence so if you execute this sequence it will solve the problem and that will lead you also to achieve the goal now, once a solution is found through the search, it can now be carried out okay, by just following the actions in the action sequence representing the solution. And this process of going through the action sequence and executing each one of them is called the execution phase. Okay, so in essence, we have three main things uh, basically in the process uh, formulate search and execute so agents that are involved in problem solving and especially those that uses the goal uh, as they are eight normally involve these this steps formulate search and execute the following shows the full algorithm simple problem solving agents so they receive a parset 
and they will return an action. Now, this agents they keep a number of information one is the sequence uh, so an action sequence initially empty basically this is the purpose of the search to find the action sequence that will solve the problem then we have state this is some description of the current world state and then we have the goal uh, of course, initially null because we have to go through the process of formulating the goal. And problem. Again, the problem has to be formulated. So out of these four items, you can see it's only state that actually the system knows for now. We have to generate the sequence, to formulate the goal, formulate the problem, and then go ahead and do the search. Let's go through the statement. So the first thing is update the state based on the past set receipt. So this is the updated state. Then you check if sequence is empty, which it is initially, then go through the three processes or three steps that we mentioned. Formulate the goal. So you're going to use the state as input to formulate the goal formulate the problem so this will take the state and the goal as input uh, to have the problem formulated it is this problem that you now pass into the search so search as we said will return a sequence of actions which if they are executed the problem will have been solved now once we obtain that sequence the next step, of course, is to go ahead and execute the sequence. Uh, but the search may not actually uh, reach the target. It could, it could end in failure, as we shall see. Uh, the search process can return a sequence or failure. So if it is failure, we simply terminate the process and return a null action. But otherwise, we now have to execute this sequence. So this involves going through them one by one. You can see here, first sequence will uh, obtain the first sequence from the list. Okay, uh, execute it, and then uh, go ahead and get the next se next uh, sequence from the rest, and so on. So eventually all the sequence returned by the search will be executed and the problem will have been solved and the agent will have done its job okay this is basically the algorithm for general algorithm for simple problem solving agents one thing to note is that while the agent is executing the solution sequence which is returned by the search so it's going to be executing them one by one momentarily it will be ignoring the passet uh, the person is not going to make any input. We have already found how to reach this particular goal. So it will follow the sequence one by one. And then after it finish, then it will receive the next passage, generate another problem, and start the process all over again. Now to successfully apply searching to solve the problem, the problem itself needs to be well defined. So that's what we call formulating the problem. To have a sense of what this means, let's take an example. It says, assuming you are on a holiday in Romania, currently in a city called Arad. So you are in Arad, but you suddenly realize that your flight leaves tomorrow from the Romanian capital of Bucharest. And so, you now have your goal of driving to Bucharest to catch your flight the following morning. Okay, so this is the city of Bucharest. The question is, how do you uh, formulate the problem? What is the goal? How do you formulate the problem? And then how do you do the searching and so on? So this is what we are going to see next.
I show the map again here just to make sure the statements are clear. So formulating the problem involves identifying five components. Uh, for this particular problem, the first component is to identify the initial state. The initial state that the agent starts in. In this case, it is Arad. The agent is starting from Arad. Uh, I should emphasize that for, example, for some problems, the states may not be clear from the problem. So first you have to identify the states. But in this case, the states are clear. The main cities in the map of Romania give us the states. So we know the state space for this particular problem. And we are intending to move from Arad to Bucharest. So in formulating the problem, the first component is identify the initial state, which in this case is Arad. Second, we need to give a description of possible actions available to the agent for each of the states. For example, for the state in Arad, the applicable actions are go to CBU, go to Timisora, which is here, and go to Zerand. These are the possible actions because from Arad, there are only three roads going outside the town and they will take you to these three different cities. So, so therefore these are the only actions you can take in this particular state. So you need to identify the same set of actions for each possible state uh, in the problem that you are solving. The next step is to come up with a transition model. Transition model is a function, it is sometimes called successor function. That if you give it a state and one of the actions that can be taken in that state, it will give you the result, the output or the outcome of uh, applying that action. Okay, so uh, let's take for example if you are in Arad now, uh, we said one of the actions you have is you can go to uh, Timisora, you can go to Zerind, and you can go to CPU. So suppose you apply go to Zerind. In Arad, go to Zerind. So what is the expected out outcome? Obviously you will be in Zerind. So this is basically what this uh, successor function will tell us. If you are in this state and you apply this action, this is the outcome. So we need to specify this uh, for all the possible states in the problem space. Okay, and that is what is called transition model or sometimes successor function. The next component the you need to identify in formulating a problem is you have to identify the goal test which determines whether a given state is a goal state. We have to know when we have reached the goal. So there must be a test that we can use or we can apply to know if we have reached the, the uh, goal. And the final thing is the path cost. What is the cost of the path from the initial state to the goal? Okay, because that is what will tell us actually whether uh, we have achieved the optimal solution or not. Now, let's take another example, the same example that we discussed in the last lecture. Uh, which is the vacuum cleaner world. We all remember the situation, so I don't need to repeat it here. The question is, how can you formulate the problem for this particular example? So let's go through. In this case, we need to identify the states. They don't look to be obvious. So for the state, 
each state is determined by both the agent location and the that location so is the agent in a or is in b also is the square a dirty or not is square b dirty or not these three things will give us the state so the agent is in one of two locations each of which might or might not contain that and therefore you have a total of two times two square which is equal to eight possible world states we shall see them all in the next slide so states are clear then the initial state in this particular case the initial state can be anywhere so any state can be designated as the initial state and then what are the actions in each state that the agent can take as we learned from last lecture in any state there are only three actions the agent can suck or if it is already on the left it can go to right if it is on the right square it can go to the left square these are the only three actions in any of those eight possible states uh, what is the goal test so in this case the goal test is simply to check whether all the squares are clean because if they are clean the goal of the agent has been satisfied the I'm delaying the uh, transition model because it will take uh, more space we'll see it in the next slide but we can talk about the path cost so here each step the agent take we consider it to be one unit so each step cost one and therefore the path cost is simply the number of steps in the path now let's look at the successor function or the transition model the actions uh, have their expected effects based on where the, the agent is and based on the condition of that square whether it is dirty or not the only case is if the if the agent is in the left square then of course he cannot move to the left he can only move to the right so applying the action to move to the left will make the agent to remain where it is and similarly for the right if he's in the right square uh, he cannot go to the right uh, further he can only go to the left so based on that this is the transition model for this very simple example so these are all the possible eight states that you can think of one two three four five six seven eight so both squares are dirty and the agent is in square a the other one is the agent in square b and then this one's the one of the squares is not dirty and the other one is dirty but here the agent is in the clean square uh, here is actually in the dirty square here uh, is also in the dirty square but the square a and so on so these are the possible states now let's look at the successor function what it is telling us so for each state try to apply those three actions and see what you will have for example if he is in this state if the agent is in this state if he is in square a which is on the left if he apply the action go to the left he will remain where he is but if it applies the, the action go to the right okay so it will be moved to the right square but without sucking the dot that is currently in a just move to the right okay but if while in this square a the agent apply the uh, action suck then it will suck the dot so that square will remain uh, clean 
okay but the agent will remain where it is because he only applied stack while he's in a so he is still in a of course he can now apply right to go to the b square and so on so this is what we mean by transition model uh, it should be clear from any state what the agent which which other state the agent will reach after applying any of the possible actions so this is part of uh, formulating the problem we need to know these different possible outcomes based on applying the actions so it is called successor because if you think of it like a graph actually applying any of the action will move him to uh, another vertex if you like so the the, the, the state that that is next to the one he is yeah, in some cases he will remain where he is actually because he cannot move let's take more examples that can actually be solved by searching uh, strategies uh, another example common example is the eight puzzle problem so this is a popular game i'm sure many of you know it so here we have a total of eight slides in a three by three square and one empty square so the squares are numbered from one to eight and then the ninth one is a blank the initial state could be any random state like the one you are seeing here this could be the start state or the initial state and the goal of the game is to have the numbers arranged in, in increasing order so for example this can be a goal state where the blank is in the first square and then we have one two three four five six seven eight there may be one more than I mean there may be more than one possible goal state for example we could decide that a goal can also be achieved if the blank is in the last square so we just had one two three four five six seven eight and the last one is an empty cell so this is the problem how can you formulate this problem so basically in this case with the states are not clear you need to be able to specify what what are the states so we need to identify the state space for this problem so a state description specifies the location of each of the eight tiles and the blank in one of the nine squares okay so all the possible combinations will give you the states that are possible in this problem what will be the initial state is generally a random uh, arrangement of this number so we can say it's any state could be initial state what are the actions well if you look at it from uh, because there are two ways to look at it you can look at it from the point of sliding the numbers uh, so in that case you have to consider each uh, uh, square and see if you slide it uh, each possible square that can be slide uh, usually there are four of them that can be slide like here we can slide it two down or six to the left five to the right or three to the and so on but actually it is much easier to think of it in terms of moving the blank although it is the uh, the the slide i mean it is in the numbers that you will slide the tiles containing the numbers that you will slide uh, think of it like you are moving the space so here for example bringing two down imagine it like say moving the blank up so because if you have just one item to move then it is very easy to identify what are the possible actions so for a blank for example it can only go left or right up or down of course in some uh, squares it some of this may not be available but these are the four possibilities uh, here for example the blank going to the left means five will come here so the blank will go to the left the blank can also go to the right means six will come to the middle 
and the blank will move to the right and the same way up and down okay so these are the possible actions based on the blank not based on the individual uh, slides that have the numbers on them what is the goal test the test should, should simply check whether the state matches the goal configuration which we, we see here continuing with that what are the transition models now given a state and an action the transition model will return the resulting state uh, for example if we apply left uh, to the start state it will result in five and the blank being switched or swapped so five will go here and blank will be here okay so we can uh, think of all the possibilities depending on where the blank is if we go to the left or to the right or up or down what are the possibilities the last one is the path cost so again in this case it is like the vacuum cleaner world each step cost a unit and therefore the path cost is the number of steps involved in the path what are the number of movement that you make to reach this yet another problem that can be solved using agents that apply this uh, such strategies is the Ed Queens problem so again this is a popular problem uh, I'm sure we discuss about it in uh, data structure when we discuss about recursion the idea is to place Ed Queens in this 8 by 8 chessboard but such that each queen will not be attacked by any other queen so it should be alone in its row, alone in its column, and alone in its two diagonals. Okay, in this case, there is only uh, one diagonal for the first queen. But for example, if you look at this one, this is one diagonal, and this is another diagonal. So it should be free in all cases. So this this is an example actually of the solution. None of these queens is attacking each other how will you formulate this problem what are the states first of all so it says here all possible arrangements of n queens n starting from 0 until 8 1 per column in the leftmost n columns okay so you cannot skip a column you have to start from empty and then you will have column one column two column three filled up like that until you reach column eight that's what it means only in the leftmost n columns with no queen attacking another okay so these are the possible states the initial state is the board should be empty initially yeah so when you put your first queen in the first column uh, you have started to solve the problem but initially there are no queens at all in the board what are the actions well an action simply means add a queen to any square in the leftmost empty column so not any column just the leftmost so of course if the square uh, if the board is completely empty you can only put your queen in the first column and then in the next state uh, you can only put in the second column and so on okay this actually is a variation of the problem that is much easier to solve there are other variation that says just put a queen anywhere uh, provided it doesn't uh, attack okay but that is diff much more difficult to solve than this one this one goes gradually from left to right transition model will return the board with a queen added one queen added at a time to the specified square of course such that there are no attacks the goal test 
simply check if all the eight queens are on the board and none of them is being attacked then the goal has been achieved there are many many other problems that can be solved using this uh, searching techniques and usually the agents will be represented as goal based agents where the problem is formulated as we saw in this uh, few examples so another example is the magic cube i'm sure you know that to arrange all the cubes such that each side has one color uh, so one color one side will be completely white another side will be red and so on uh, it could be a maze problem so you could have an object starting from a particular point on the maze and we want it to pass through the mail avoiding all the walls until it reaches the other end this could be another problem that can be solved using this approach web search engine again this is a problem that can also be solved using approach this approach uh, another example is troubling salesman problem this is a very popular classical problem i believe we discussed it in both the data structure course and in the algorithm course where the idea is for the troubling salesman to go through all the uh, vertices if you like all the cities that he has to go through and then come back to the starting point without repeating visiting a city or without repeating uh, the ages so something like this that we see in this graph it's a very tough problem which is actually NP complete but some solution can be found using some of these searching techniques uh, but they are not optimal solutions of course okay so having seen the kind of problems that this strategy of searching can solve the next step is to look at the searching itself what does it actually mean because if you remember our algorithm we said after you formulated the goal formulated the problem the next step is to do the search so we're going to look at the the searching itself look at the general algorithms uh, and then later on we look at some of the characteristics that we will consider to know whether that searching strategy is good or not so once a problem is formulated the next step is to find a solution using searching a solution as we already explained is an action sequence do this then do that then do that and so on such that by the time you execute all the actions in the sequence you will have achieved the goal okay so the search algorithm will work by considering various possible action sequence and eventually it will give you one particular sequence as the solution the possible action sequences starting at the initial state form what we call a search tree with the initial state as the root of that tree the branches are actions that you can perform at each state and the nodes correspond to the state in the state space for the particular problem this is an example so from what we saw in that uh, Romanian problem your initial state is Arat and from Arat we saw that you can go to three cities directly you can go to Sibiu you can go to Timisora or you can go to Zerind so this is how it is normally represented in a search tree okay the starting state is the root and the states that you can go from there are the branches and so on and so forth so the next once we uh, uh, identify the starting state is to expand that state and look at the possible actions that are 
that we can take and what results we're going to obtain by taking those actions. The set of all leaf nodes available for expansion at any given point is called the frontier. So for example, if we are in Arad, then the frontier consists of three possible states, namely Sibiu, Timisora, and Zerind. And we're going to take an action to go to one of them. Uh, or the other, depending on the searching strategy. So this is where the strategy will come in. And we're going to see different ways of exploring these different uh, uh, states that are in the frontier. So for example, one strategy after uh, expanding Arad to the three different uh, possibilities, it will choose this CBU and try to explore it again. So in that we will have four different places we can go to from CBU. And you may probably notice that Arad is one of them because obviously there is a link between CBU and Arad. From Arad we can go to CBU, from CBU we can come back to Arad and the other three are cities that you can go to CBU. Now this is uh, dangerous because actually this could lead to an infinite uh, search tree. So you could be an infinite loop in an infinite loop, uh, keep going back and forth between Arad and, and uh, Sibiu. So we're going to see that there are ways to try and avoid having this repetition. But ordinarily, from what we have just said, Arad is a possible place you can go from Sibiu. So if you just expand the tree, you could have one node representing Arad. Now, we're going to look at two general search algorithms. Uh, one of them is called tree search, and the other one is called graph search. So the general tree search is as follows. So it receives the problem. After formulating the problem, remember that's what we call the search method. So the tree search will receive the problem and it will try to solve it. So you can see it will return either a solution or a failure. Now the first thing the tree search algorithm does is it will initialize the frontier. You can think of this frontier like a cube. So initialize the queue with the initial state. Okay, the problem, remember one of the components inside the problem is the initial state. It has the initial state, it has the transition model, it has the test, what we can use to know if we have reached the goal state, and so on. So from the problem, take out the initial state and initialize, use it to initialize the frontier. And then you repeat in a loop. One, if the frontier is empty, then obviously there is no solution. So we return failure. Otherwise, we're going to choose a leaf node from the frontier, remove it from the frontier, and if the node contains a goal, so the node we have just removed from the frontier, we're going to check. Does it contain the goal? If yes, then return the corresponding solution as the solution. The solution here doesn't mean just the node that we have just removed. Actually, it's a sequence of nodes that will you will trace back from this node back to the, the starting state. This is what will give you the solution. So there are uh, ways to generate the solution if we reach the goal. Now, if it is not the goal, then you now have to expand that particular node by looking at what are its successes. So expand the chosen node, adding the resulting nodes to the frontier. So this will add more nodes to the frontier, and then you start again. So this is the tree search algorithm. As we can see, or as we saw in the example there, 
one of the problem with the tree search is that it can result in an infinite loop because here there is no condition to check whether we have visited that particular node earlier so we may be going back and forth between uh, yes, a node and another one and end up in an infinite loop so a way to avoid exploring redundant path and to avoid this infinite loop is to keep track of the explored state so not only do we keep the frontier but the states that we uh, explored we also keep them in memory so that when we uh, we're going to see the algorithm in a moment but basically it will allow us to avoid the repetition now this is done in what is called the general graph search algorithm and this is the graph search algorithm so like the tree search to receive the problem and it will return a solution or a failure actually most of the statements are similar but the differences are highlighted in bold so the first one here is the same initialize the frontier using the initial state of the problem so same like before but also now you have to initialize another set so there are two sets in this grab algorithm the frontier and the explored set so the explored set is another one which will be initially set to empty because so far we have not explored any state then you start the loop okay first statement is the same if the frontier is empty then there is an issue the searching did not result in a solution so we're going to return a failure otherwise if it is not empty we're going to choose a leaf node and remove it from the frontier so again this is the same like before uh, we check if the node contains the goal state then we return the corresponding solution as the solution okay but now there is addition uh, what if it doesn't contain the goal state then now add it to the explored set then expand the choosing node adding the resulting node to the frontier so the node we have just removed from the frontier and put it in the explored set we now need to expand it get the successors and put all of them in the frontier now this is the last difference it says only if not in frontier or explored state in other words adding a new node which you can reach from the current one should only be done if it is not already in the frontier and it is not already in the explored state so this is actually how we avoid the repetition so if your node is already in the frontier don't add it similarly if the node was explored before it's not in the frontier but it is it was explored earlier on so you find it in the explore state again don't uh, add it to the frontier so this is basically how the graph uh, search will solve the problem uh, if you notice actually this is exactly what we learned in data structure when we learned breadth first traversal and depth first traversal there was no issue because in tree you will never uh, come back to where you were before because there were no cycles in trees but in graphs there were cycles okay there were also these joint nodes so we had to improvise solution to those so this is exactly what we are saying here that you have to keep track of the nodes that you have visited before so that you don't repeat them and in the graph search this is how you do it you keep track of them in a set and then when you remove a node and you are trying to explore it to get the successors only add the successor if it is not already in the frontier and it is not already in the explore state now uh, another thing we need before we start looking at the strategies 
is the infrastructure for the search algorithm. Uh, I showed you, for example, that uh, once we reach a node which is the goal state, then we can generate the solution by tracing back from this goal to the initial state. Well, to be able to do this, we need to keep some information within the node themselves. So we need to have a data structure actually that can uh, uh, maintain some information that we need to allow us to do this tracing back. So it says here, search algorithms require a data structure to keep track of the search tree that is being constructed. For each node N of the tree, we have a structure that contains four components, as you see in this diagram. So what are the four components? One, it should uh, tell us the state. Okay, the state in the state space to which this node corresponds. So each node corresponds to a certain state within the state space of the problem. So it should tell us which state is it. Okay, for example, as you are seeing in this figure, uh, this node is telling us it is representing this state. This is one. Two, it will tell us the parent, meaning the node in the search tree that generated this node. You saw that, for example, for Arad, we can go to Zerind. So the node representing Zerin will tell us my parent is Arad. So this is what you are seeing here. The node will tell us its parent. The data structure will be able to tell us the action that was applied to the parent to generate the node itself. Okay, so this, for example, was saying uh, from parent, the action that was applied to get this state is action right meaning move the empty cell to the right and the last one end dot path cost uh, of the path from the initial state to the node as indicated by the parent pointer so actually the information being stored here is not just the cost from the parent to the current node no actually is the cost from the initial uh, state until the current state, what is the cost? So we can know that immediately by asking the node itself. How much did it cost to reach from the initial state to you? And it will tell us by just looking at uh, its property called uh, path cost. For example, it will tell us six. So these are the four information that normally are presented in the node. And of course, these nodes, as we saw, will be represented uh, inside the frontier and also inside the explored set, if we are using the graph algorithm. Okay, the final thing before we start looking at our, at our search strategies is how do we measure the performance of the different search strategies that we are going to learn? How do we say they are good or bad? They are behaving well or not? Before we get into the design of specific search algorithms, we need to consider the criteria that might be used to choose among them, which of them perform better than the other. We can evaluate an algorithm's performance in four different ways. One, its completeness. So what does completeness mean? Is the algorithm guaranteed to find a solution if one exists? If yes, then the algorithm is said to be complete. It is guaranteed to find a solution. Second is optimality. Does the strategy find the optimal solution? In other words, the solution we obtained, is it really the optimal it is a solution quite okay, but is there another solution that we can get that is cheaper? Okay, if no, this is the cheapest, 
then we say it is optimal uh, and the last two are the time complexity and the space complexity i'm sure you are all familiar with this time complexity means how much does it take to find the solution and the space complexity means how much memory is needed to actually go through this algorithm okay so those are the basic information we need before we start looking at our different searching strategies uh, but before we do that once again just a few words about the uninformed search strategies say so uninformed search are blind naive brute force or exhaustive search okay they have no additional information about the states of the problem beyond that provided in the problem definition and therefore they are blind so they don't have any extra information okay they just keep searching until they reach the goal so uninformed search therefore are very general problem solving techniques that systematically enumerate all possible candidates and check whether each candidate satisfies the problem statement or not they are exhaustive search or brute for search and therefore they are actually very expensive okay we shall consider the following uninformed search strategies uh, as we mentioned at the beginning uh, bfs ucs dfs dls ids and finally bds all right so we're going to start from the bfs breath first search breath first search uh, is not new to you actually because we did it uh, in data structure the only difference is that at that point we were looking at it from the point of view of traversal trying to reach each node within the tree or the graph but in this case we are not trying to reach each and every node no we're going to keep traversing until we reach our goal so once we reach the goal we are done but the idea is exactly the same so the root node is expanded first then all the successors of the root node are expanded next as we know breath first traversal does the traversal level by level if you recall and therefore when we come to a node we look at all its children before we look at the grandchildren okay so this is what it means here that uh, once we reach when we if we start from the root node we're going to ex expand to the level just after that and then the next level after that and so on so level by level uh, we will see example in a moment so all the nodes at a given level in the search tree are expanded before any node at the next level is expanded now here is the difference in the general search algorithm we didn't specify the nature of the frontier uh, whether it's going to be a stack or it's going to be a queue but here we're going to specify our frontier is actually a first in first out queue or FIFO queue as it is called all right in other words it is a normal queue that we know okay the book as you will see it calls all of these different data structures simply as q so we have a fee for q and a leaf for q so leaf for q obviously is a stack and fee for q is the normal q that we are familiar with so breath first search will do the searching by make using the frontier to be a data structure that is a queue so let's see an example so if you start from a a is the root before we start we need to first put the a in our queue then we start a loop 
Okay, so as long as the queue is not empty, we dequeue A. So the success of A are B and C, therefore after removing A and checking whether it is the goal, in this case, we're going to assume G here is our goal. So obviously A is not the goal. So just put the successes in the queue. And since it is the queue, we're going to remove the front one first, which is B. So remove it and exploit. So the dark color here means the node has been explored. And it, it turns out that it is not equal to the goal. So look at its successors and enqueue them. So we're going to enqueue D and E. So the next front item in the queue is C. So we're going to dequeue it. So you can see that we are doing it actually level by level. After this level, then this level. Then all of these four elements will be explored before we look at the bottom level and so on. So there is literally nothing new that you don't already know about breath for such. It is the same thing. The only difference is now we will stop because we have found the target. So no need to visit the rest of the elements. The target has been found. So the next question is, what is the performance of this breath for search based on the criteria that we identified earlier? So first, in terms of completeness, uh, if we notice, if the shallowest goal node is at some finite depth D, then definitely breath first search will eventually find it uh, after generating all shallower nodes, provided the branching factor B is finite. That's the only condition. So if the, uh, the branching factor is finite and the depth at which the uh, uh, the goal is is also finite the breath first search will find it okay so it is a complete algorithm no issue it will find the solution as long as the search space is finite and the goal is at some finite uh, depth and the branching factor is finite it will find it what about optimality is it really optimal and the answer is it is optimal as long as uh, the step costs are equal so for example if you are in a if going to b or going to c will cost the same and if there are no specific uh, weight to the ages then yes the solution you are going to get is optimal so breath first is very good in that it will give you an optimal solution what about complexity? Now the total number of nodes, assuming the branching factor is B, branching factor here means if we have a node, how many subtrees will it have? So suppose that is B. And then assuming the depth of the tree is D, then these are the nodes that are going to be created uh, in the tree, uh, you know, based on this search. Okay, so there will be one node for the root, and then next level, because there are B subtrees, there will be B nodes. Okay, each of those B nodes will have another B node, so we're going to have B square in the next level, and so on. So the last level will have B to power D. Uh, just to make it easy for you to think about this, assuming it is a binary tree. Then level 1, of course, will have one element. Level 2 will have 2. But level 3 will have 4, 2 to the power 2, which is 4. Level 3 will have 8, and so on and so forth. Okay, but this is a general tree. The branching factor is not necessarily 2. It is B. So these are the possible nodes that will be created. And in the worst case, the algorithm has to reach each of this node looking for the goal. The goal, if you are not lucky, may be in the last level and the rightmost element. 
so you have to go through all the nodes before you can reach it and therefore the running time of uh, of this algorithm in terms of complexity is actually b to power d plus one okay d plus one because actually if you remember the uh, the counting is from zero okay so zero the one two three and so on until d so the total actually is d plus one so that is the uh, the cost in terms of time what about in terms of space unfortunately in terms of space the running time is also the same because if you notice this algorithm it is exploring each node from top to bottom top to bottom left to right and each node is either going to be in the frontier or it is going to be in the explored node uh, explored set okay so either way each node that it has gone through will remain in memory until it find the solution and therefore the memory requirement is also b to power d and actually this is the worst nightmare for this uh, algorithm as we shall see here with an example the time and memory requirement for breath first search the numbers shown here in this table assume a branching factor of 10 so suppose you have a tree that can have each each node can have 10 sub trees and assuming it takes 1 million nodes per second okay I mean it processes 1 million node per second so this is how fast it is uh, it can go from one node to another uh, it can process 1 million node in a second which is pretty fast so very much like normal uh, present computers and assuming that each node will require 1000 bytes to store so with this assumption let us see what we need for this algorithm to work depending on the depths of the tree so at depth 2 we will only need 110 nodes okay remember we're gonna have the root which will have 10 uh, nodes and then each of those 10 will have another 10 10 okay so basically you have about 110 in level if, if the height is 2 okay and if you do the multiplication based on this node per second it takes only 11 milliseconds to do this and this is the memory so not much of a problem if the depth is only 2 uh, even when it is 4 it's still fair just 11,000 nodes which will be computed in 11 milliseconds but take the depth to 6 and you will start having problem uh, there will be 10 to power 6 uh, nodes created it will take 1.1 second but in terms of memory 1 gigabyte just 6 level 1 gigabyte okay if the depth is 8 the problem is beginning to get out of hand still okay in terms of time just two minutes but in terms of memory 103 gigabytes okay okay maybe you have uh, computers that still have this as uh, easy okay uh, if the depth is 10 however it will take three hours and it will take 10 terabytes how many of you have a computer that takes a terabyte maybe just one terabyte but increase the depth to 12 and you are in real trouble it takes 12 days to produce that tree and it take one petabyte so far there is no PC that has this amount of space okay so you can see uh, clearly there's a problem with this algorithm uh, if you take the depth to be 16 
then you will not live to see the the output because it takes 350 years with 10 exabyte required all right so this is a problem with depth first uh, of course it is an exponential uh, performance as we saw in both the space and memory so it is only manageable for a tree that is of limited height or depth once you go beyond those uh, it is impossible okay so exponential complexity such problems cannot really be solved by uniformed by uninformed methods uh, for any but the smallest instances as we can see here and this is true actually for all the uninformed such method that we're going to study all of them actually they are mostly exponential especially in terms of the running time some of them may be good in terms of space as we shall see the breadth first search is good in terms of space but it has its own problem.